Hello and welcome to the Analog Toys live stream. And I'm joined today by my good friend, Michael Schaefer, because I felt like I needed a mask expert in the room. <laughs> I'm no expert, just an enthusiast, but I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you for having me on, Tony. Appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome, mate. It's um, I, I'd, I'd pretty much say the same about myself with, with with anything. I'm not an expert. I'm just very passionate about it all. Right. So, exactly. Um, so we've got a mixture of toys on the table here. I asked Michael to to put out some of the toys that I don't have from Wave One. Um, this is pretty much the entirety of my collection, minus Boulder Hill, which is um, uh, it's actually it's upstairs in the studio because I'm working on a video for um, for Iconic on. So um, just say hello to everyone in the chat. So we got Monkey Boy, Cloth Cat, Bobby L. Collins, a world made of cardboard, Tim Ward, our buddy Joseph, Daniel Dorian, Kieran Ball, uh, Keith Knight, of course, um, Matt Tracker. Uh, he says he's here to help as as always. So awesome. So I, th I thought we'd start off by asking you um, your sort of childhood memories of, of Mask. When did you get into Mask? So it would have been right, right in 1985. I saw the uh, cartoons after school, and I was hooked right away. And then s shortly thereafter saw the toys. Uh, my first one was Condor, uh, you know, the smaller vehicle, affordable. Remember, got that at Hills Department Store with my mom. And uh, and I was just hooked ever since. Uh, you know, you see the cartoon every single day after school. Yeah, I could walk down the street uh, from my house to the hardware store, and I remember buying mask vehicles. And at that point, what was that, 85? So I was 11 years from old. From the hardware store? Yeah, from a, a local hardware store called Wilhelm's Hardware. You could go in there. You could buy, you know, two nails or a toilet snake or tampons <laughs> or rocket parts and there, they sold models and testers paint and all of that stuff so yeah you could buy anything in the hardware store that ah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah it was really cool um it was there up until maybe 10 years ago i'd say wilhelm's hardware store um yeah, nice. anyway so yeah i could walk in there and with pocket money and stuff that i earned you know i could afford the smaller things like condor or uh, piranha or um trying to think of some of the other smaller ones but then you know for birthdays and whatnot i remember getting you know bigger vehicles christmas and that this would have been christmas of 85 that i got boulder hill so these are all my childhood survivors luckily oh wow yeah. childhood survivors yeah all yep. right oh, so, so so the cartoon came first for you you saw the cartoon and that's what right. got you hooked on the toy line so i i saw the cartoon as as a child and was um really enjoyed the cartoon really wanted to get into the toys but it was one of those years when I, I don't know i don't know what year it came out in the uk normally everything comes a year or two later um in the uk i'm pretty certain it wasn't 85 it would have more likely been 86 um at which time i don't know if i was into a team or coleco's rambo or something like that sure. um but the one toy i had as well was was condor and I, I've got a very vague memory of it. I'm not sure. I really don't think my parents bought it for me. I think I swapped with a kid at school for maybe an Action Force toy or something. I, I did a swap. Nice. Um, and I had Condor for a while. And then m when my mum found out I'd traded it with a kid at school, she made me trade it back. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, but Condor was the only toy that I I. I had even for a brief time in my childhood, but I do remember playing with the Rhino. There was a, a, a definitely a kid in the street who um, who had the Rhino. So yeah, um, I love the toy. Yeah, uh, Dean from All Things Eighties here yeah. says, uh, yeah, he thinks it was eighty six in the UK. Yeah, n normally everything we would get um, like a year or so later. Nice. So, yeah, if, I'm, you, if I'm looking over here, guys, it's because I'm looking at a different screen. I'm not, you know, ignoring anybody just in case. Oh, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> Do you, do you have do you have a favorite vehicle? Oh man, um, man, that's hard. Uh, I mean, you know, there's always. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, uh, had to do that because because uh, of Jody. Actually, I have I have the T Bob Jody got me. He got me a. I think it's 3D printed, or it might be cast resin. 
nice job. I have to paint it yet, but it, you know, it, it's much more screen accurate. Arms and legs yeah. move the whole deal. And then uh, a boxed, carded, where he's the diver in that one episode. He goes, oh, nice. He goes into some sort of pond, I think, with Scott. He gets in trouble, of course, as always. Anyway. Yep. Um, the fans I, are doing the best work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, I would say for the for mask side, I would say Thunderhawk. I know it's a cliche, but it, it's it's a great vehicle. Um, I, there's something about Rhino though, because it it's not just a vehicle; it's it's actually two vehicles and a mobile command center. So yeah, Rhino. I mean that that's a hell of a vehicle. I always love that. I mean anything with an ejector seat ever since Goldfinger with Bond, you know. So yeah, yeah. love that <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and a yeah, you know, it's, it, it, missile it's, silo it's very, in the back. It's a very impressive toy. When I um, I, I purchased this recently from from eBay. That's beautiful. Um, I don't know. I've, I've probably had it for a, for a month or two now. And I remember when I when I first got it out, and I was like, I've played with this when I was a kid. I remember how it works, but I was still kind of struggling to. I think what it was, I'd opened the back cab straight away, um, opened the back cab yeah. to access like the command center, yeah. and then you can't access the buttons after that. So I'm like, yeah. how do you pop out the grill and the ejector seat and everything? It's hidden under the cab. So. I guess the logic was you wouldn't really use the grill or the ejector seat unless you were underway. And if you were underway, yeah. you wouldn't have the back open, I, you know, I guess is the logic. Well, d design limitations as well. You can only yeah. pack so much into. It's amazing what they packed into those, that smaller scale toy. The, the amount of engineering and small mechanisms. I don't know if you've ever seen any of these apart, but they are complex little toys. They really are. They are. They, I mean, what, you know, that, you know, to have the, to have those springs, to have things pop out like that. And then to, to, to cast a place to hold that, that gun in the toy. I mean, how many toys had a place, you know, to store parts, formers, weapons and stuff. I don't know. I always thought that was amazing personally. And speaking of which, I've been looking around on eBay for a jackhammer, and it is very, very hard to get them with that gun. Yes. I, um, I actually took quite a while. That was one missing part of this childhood toy. I had to, I had to find the, the missing gun. It, it fell out yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I was lucky to, lucky to find it at a reasonable price. But as you know, looking now, I mean, it, they're, not, they're not cheap. Some of these parts are really costly to replace yeah yep yeah. um of course I, I want to do a big shout out to to matt swafford at reclaimers vintage toys um over on instagram uh, he also has a has a patreon you can join where you kind of get early access to his latest acquisition uh, acquisitions i um secured a couple of centurions figures yesterday that'll make you happy <laughs> nice that's a great line that is awesome yeah i'm yeah can't wait to see those i i can't wait to see what you think of that line because i I know you, you know, some people are averse to a larger scale figure, but you clearly have no problem with your love of action, man. No. Um, and yeah, I mean, being bigger than the, the Motu figures and having more articulation, I, I really think you're going to love that toy line. I really do. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So <clears throat> a, a number of these vehicles have, have come from Matt Swafford at Reclaimers Vintage Toys. And the most recent two is the Piranha and the Gator. And the Gator, it's a... It, it's a simple little toy. It's probably got one of the, the, the more simple engineering mechanisms to it. Mm -hmm. I had so much fun just playing around with this when I first got it, just yeah. putting the little boat in, shooting it out. I did that a few times. It's, like, it's so funny how such a simple little play device can, even at I'm almost 44 years of age now and I'm having all this fun uh, shoot, shooting the boat out. Then I put Dusty Hayes in the driver's seat and went to do it again and his helmet keeps hitting the the dashboard and he and he won't shoot out so that's a common problem mine did that too i'd have to scrunch him down as hard as i could and really make sure you get that lever back and even then sometimes is his helmet because it's a different kind of rubber than a lot of the other helmets or plastic it's a yeah. softer squishier i don't know if you have helmet the version one or the version two of the helmet but both of them are the same way yeah. Um, Ronnie James, DOA, thank you very much for the super chat with no 
comment. If um, if you accidentally hit send before your comment come up, just retype your comment, and we'll uh, we'll be sure to give you a we'll shout out there. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, so I, um, I was lucky because I almost bought this gator off eBay a while back, um, and then you know not not being a, a, any any anything close to a mask expert. I can't remember who I was speaking to. They're like, no, don't get that one. It's missing the bomb out of the back. Um, or the, the depth charge, I should say. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, this the, the stuff I get from Matt Swafford, it's always in really good condition. You know, well, he, he's very um, accurate and, and honest about his um, yes. assessment of the, the, the quality. Of the Every toy I've ever bought from him, it's been reasonably priced. And it's always arrived in the condition that he he says it's going to be in. So, I, I, and actually, I need to thank him. Oh, because he sent me one of these as well, and I didn't. Oh, have this that's one. a beautiful catalog. That is a gorgeous catalog. Yeah, that's nice. It is. It is. I um I do love the uh, the traditional toy catalog. So, absolutely. Got world made a cardboard here. Um, thank you very much for the super chat, well made from Cardboys. Don't worry, Tony, I'm 50 and still play with my toys. <laughs> well, I often say that um, making my videos is my excuse to play with my toys because I get them out of the cabinets and I set them up for the, all the different shots. Um, spent a long time filming all the B-roll recently for my Ghostbusters feature for Iconicon, which some of the patrons have had the opportunity to to see already um i'm doing a, a couple of days per tier so every everyone on patreon will get to see that before um iconic on i don't think the same will happen with the mass boulder hill playset um i'm doing a review of that for iconic on um because that video i don't think it's going to be ready until well, close to the death not close to the start of the convention so that tracker this this made me laugh <laughs> My favorite part of the gator has to be the box. Product does not float. Yeah, that is a fact. Doesn't it float the boat? No, 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 it'll fill with water. The back of it's not watertight because of that little hinge part to drop yeah. the depth charge. So, yeah. You know, I I, I had the, the Cobra Hydra fall from the G.I. Joe toy line um, that obviously recently Jody um, very kindly donated to the channel. and. I don't think when I was a child, because of the size of it, it was too big really to be a bath time toy. Yeah. I don't think I've ever put it in water, but I'm pretty certain that that thing won't float either. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. The bottom probably has screws or something. You know, uh, yeah. It's got, it's got holes where some plastic clips go in to hold like the hydrofoil blades and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. Um, Just reading the comments here. Sorry, guys. That's all right. And he's. And Joseph saying his piranha certainly sank like a submarine should. <laughs> yeah, so this this piranha, this again, this um this and the gator turned up together cool. from um from Reclaimers Vintage Toys. Um beautiful front windshield on the motorcycle. That's um from what I've heard, a very difficult piece to get in nice condition. Indeed, yes. That looks that looks to be in great nick. Absolutely. It is, Jeff, it is, yeah. Jeff Barker with us. Um, Thank you very much, Jeff Barker. He says, I'm just learning more about the mask line. Blame it on Chris Miwa. <laughs> um, did they go downhill a bit after the first season? Um, well, I don't know about the first season. Uh, 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 if you're talking about the waves of the toys as opposed to the cartoon, probably not the first season, maybe into the, maybe into the third wave. Certainly, they, they started to... They no longer did chrome parts, which is a good thing when you're a collector now because the chrome is. is so I've got a, I've got one of those Molotov chrome pens over there, getting ready to to do some work on these guys. But I'll have to do it after I've done the Boulder Hill playset because obviously I've got to let it cure for quite some time. Um, but I've got, I have do have one of the other um, later toys. I can't remember what it's called. The ATV. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, the uh, the smaller one. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 yes, uh, Chris Miwa just got this. I can't remember. I can't remember. Iguana, the iguana. Lester That's Sludge. It. Yes, the iguana. Yeah, That's yeah. That's not a bad so, one. Yeah, I have that one too. Yeah, they don't. They didn't. They don't quite come up to the standard of that that first wave, though, do they? Yeah. Wait, you were right. One and two are both solid waves, but 
after that, it really is hit or miss. I mean, the Manta's beautiful. That wasn't until wave four. Uh, yeah. But we saw that on the cartoon all the time. I think Hurricane, the uh, 57 Chevy, was later release. But it it that's a good one, too. Yeah. Here's a super chat. Uh, thank you, Daniel Dorian. It says, you're never too old or too young to play with or collect any toy line. I'm in my 20s, and I collect things 15, 20 years before my time. Um, same here, Daniel. You know, I, I was born in the late 70s, but there are parts of my collection that go all the way back to now. I've got a lot of stuff from 1964, 65 from the original G.I. Joe toy line. So, A Matt Tracker here, he said about the cartoon, yes. There's, there's two seasons, 65 episodes for the first one, which is much stronger than that second racing series season. Just Yeah, so I actually sat down and, and watched a couple of episodes yesterday, um, just doing a little bit of research for the Boulder Hill video. Um, I watched the pilot episode. Um, interesting. Uh, some nice animation in it. Yeah, I, I, think the, I think the cartoon really holds up over, you know, after all these years. I have it. I have the box set, and I love it. Yeah. And a world made of cardboard. Thank you again. This is, uh, what do you think of some of the actual vehicles that can change into other vehicles? Um, car to prop plane, Jeep to speedboat, et cetera. Um, well, I, I think the real, the one we really need to speak about is on your table there. Um, and that's the switchblade. Because it turns from a jet plane into a helicopter. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not really sure of the benefits of that <laughs> well you know if you don't have a harrier it gives you vertical and yeah and uh what not take off you know i mean i always i thought it was cool as hell as a kid i mean come on don't make a liar out of me now it's, oh <laughs> Gotta, there, there, there must have been a, a kid living in my street who um who had both the Rhino and the Switchblade, because I distinctly remember playing with them. Has, has, has the Switchblade got a bomb as well? It does. On the bottom, there's a yep. an orange bomb, yep. Yeah, so again, you know, looking around on eBay, trying to acquire one of those, you've got to make sure you, you need to know what you're looking at. Otherwise, because some of the sellers on eBay, they, um, well, th let me put it this way. I've read some descriptions where they're not lying. They just say, um you know, condition as is in photos. Yeah. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to get it and it's going to be an incomplete toy. So and the blades, uh, the rotor blades are very hard to find intact. Um, my, my blades are intact. Actually, part of my, the piece the rotors actually clip into, part of that is missing. Um, I Actually, David Vintage Toy Rush, he, uh, he disassembled one of these and repaired it. I, I have no idea how he managed to do it because, like I said, how complicated these are inside. I mean, it, it literally just burst into parts. Springs and mechanisms and, and gears and levers went flying. He somehow managed to find all the places everything goes back, you know, to put it back together again. But, man, yeah. it, it they're complex. I... I thought about trying to repair mine, but as soon as I saw how, you know, how complicated it was and when it just burst apart, I gave up. Because other than that one little piece, it's, it, you know, really is perfect. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to wind up destroying it if everything else was fine. No, right? especially yeah. not since it's your childhood one. So yeah, I have too much attachment to these, you know, and I lucked out, you know, most of them are in good enough shape and still, you know, do all the different things i mean this another one where you got two vehicles in one the uh the firecracker you got the you know workable they're a reuse of the wheels that were on condor and piranha I think. okay yep um you know kenner being smart again <clears throat> but the attention to detail i had said this before i i didn't notice this all the years i played with the toy but there's actual gas ports on the back of certain vehicles. It's on the underside yeah. of the uh, switchblade there at the tail. Yep. It's on here. <laughs> if you look at your Condor on the side of it, there's a little port. Well, it's literally the exact same size as, oh, the, yeah. as the hose in Boulder Hill. So you can go up to the tanks and fuel up. I mean, that they took the time to get that detail right. That's impressive. 
They didn't have to. Now I've got to go rewrite my script for the Boulder Hill place. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, all got. Let's see. The, those are the like, little details I like to get into my my videos. So, um, Keith Knight, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, I've got a chat here from Dean at All Things Eighties. He said he's having a hard time finding a nice switchblade. Aside from the brand new ones, most are either incomplete or badly damaged. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the ones I'm seeing online, Dean, have either got um, they're either missing the the pilot or Miles Mayhem is missing his helmet. Um, or do you call it a mask or a helmet? It's a helmet. <laughs> yeah, I call it a helmet too. Even yeah, I mean, they never did though. But well, didn't Michael on uh, retro blasting talk about that? Well, we couldn't call it helmet, and he puts up the acronym. You know, yeah, and yeah. come up with a a good uh, a good thing for helmet. Tell me, no, seriously, tell me. He says to the camera, cracks me up every time. Um, Jody, thank you very much for oh, the kind super okay. chat, my man. Um, just cause Jody, I've got a massive box here from you that I'll be opening later, and and I've got a, a box here from um, uh, Keith Holmesley. So nice, good bunch of guys. Yeah, um, oh, Scuba Pete just joined us, has he? Um, sorry, I'm late. Just got in from a toy hunt. Wow, found a nice switchblade for twenty bucks. Come on, really? Is he messing with us? He well, has some luck at finding toys, though. I'll he does. Him. He does. But you've got to put in the legwork, haven't you? Oh, um, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, Daniel Dorian. Whoops. Wrong one. It says, does anyone know how you can access past Retro Blasting live streams? Yes, Daniel. Go to their channel page on YouTube. Click the playlist um, tab. Then in there, they've got all their different playlists for Star Wars Follies, all their G.I. Joe videos, and look up Retro Blasting live streams, and you can see every single um, previous Retro Blasting live stream in that playlist. And um, Gojatron says, anyone remember – thank you for the super chat, Gojatron. Anyone remember a line called Vortec from 1996? It was an attempt at a mask-style toy and cartoon series that didn't catch on. I'm not familiar. Are you, Michael? No, I, I'm not at all. Never, never heard. But by that point, I mean, I was working a full time job and I'm in my 20s. I wasn't. Yeah, I was in the army. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah. You were actually doing something for a living. <laughs> and Kyle A says, Mask is such an appropriate name in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, so when, when you think about it, um, you look at all of the old 1980s toy lines, certainly the popular toy lines have either made a comeback. I mean, Transformers, I don't think, has ever been off toy store shelves, ever. ever. Um, Masters of the Universe has come and gone, but it's had a you know, pretty consistent presence over the last close to 40 years, 35 years. Um, G.I. Joe, we've had spates where G.I. Joe's not been around, but G.I. Joe's back again. But even some lesser-known toy lines they've reintroduced. They've done uh, Ken, uh, Hasbro's done re-releases of the Kenner Ghostbusters. Um, now Subpar Seven is doing Silverhawks, um, which yep. is a very you know I, I don't Silverhawks is nowhere near as well known as as Mask. No, no one's ever redone Mask. A lot of people are asking for it. I do you think it's because it's they're so complicated? I mean, they absolutely. Really I mean, there's so much more Absolutely. complicated. Than there is so much tooling involved. I think the only way we would ever see a mask... I, I could see HasLab doing a mask rhino in a larger scale. Right. Um, but it's going to be a $350 crowdfunded oh, or kind more, of toy. I would think more, even. I mean, say they Probably, did a, yeah. a true three and three quarter inch scale. I mean, they, I could see that being... Six eight hundred dollars just because yeah. it's Hasbro. Yeah, and um, and I wouldn't go for it. <laughs> no, scuba confirmed though. Yep, my neighbor had a ton of toys. I bought them all. Twenty dollars for Switch, sixty dollars for GI Joe headquarters. Damn you, scuba! Amazing, making me jealous here. That's impressive. So I I just um, 
I haven't got it yet. I purchased it on eBay yesterday. Um, what another mask toy? Because I can't really do the video without it, and I really didn't want to buy it. Have a guess what I got? What did you buy, and you didn't want to buy, and you had to get it for the video? Oh man, what don't you? For like? a mask video, right? I'm just thinking, what don't you like? T. Bob and Scott. Oh, yeah, Jesus! I didn't even think of that. I would have sent you mine. Like... You didn't have to buy it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's one of them. You, you've got to have it in the collection, haven't you? It's such you a do. key part of the, of the cartoon and everything. So I got um, mine as a kid. In... I mean, as a kid, I I thought it was lame as a kid, and I even the weird completist in me as a kid was like, "Well, I got to get this because I." It's Jody pointed this out. It's really not T Bob. T Bob's voice is annoying, but you could reprogram that. It's Scott that's annoying. It's Scott who you want to hold down in a very shallow pool of water and look into his eyes as the life drains out of his body. That is the person you don't like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but T Bob, you know, he fixed that voice. He's he's a robot that turns into a scooter. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was watching that that pilot episode uh, yesterday, and like, Scott, what, what, why have you got to hide in in the in the back of the truck and go on the mission? <laughs> it just, I know. it's not, you know, this, this this obsession that production companies have, where they feel you've got to have a kid in a cartoon yeah. for kids to have a way into it, like. You didn't need that in G.I. Joe, and that was a great cartoon. was nowhere near as good as the comics, I'll say, but, you know, it was a good cartoon. You didn't need kids in it. Um, yeah. Uh-oh. Did I upset people with my choking? I don't think that so. Toward, yeah. Wow, that got dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's only uh, an animated character. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a real kid. I would never... Oh, we're clicking on the same thing at the same time. <laughs> we are. We're both controlling the chat. Um, Jody, thank you very much for the super chat. It says, "Fun fact number one: They had an official and they had an official license with Goodyear for the tires. Fun fact two: There's a Matt Tracker three and three quarter inch figure in the GI Joe line. Is there? Yes, there is. Absolutely. Uh, and like it, an official release? Yeah. Oh, on card back the whole deal in his. I mean, it's three and three quarter, but it's in his typical outfit. I think he has some sort of flying backpack, if memory serves, or some sort of something or other. But yeah, Scuba says Resolute. I don't know if that's the line or what it's from. Yeah, okay. But yeah. Oh, no, no, he's, I, talking, he's talking to Resolute 123. Oh, I apologize. Right. Um, yeah, um, but I, uh, Joseph has shown it to me as well. Yes, Joseph says he has a helicopter backpack or pack. Yes. Okay, but cool. Yeah. He's in his classic, you know, flight suit from, uh, you know, that you yeah. would wear when you drive a Camaro. Yeah, yeah. Flight suit, sure. Yeah. So an, an interesting thing I've been thinking about as well, I'm obviously getting ready for this. Uh, I'm doing a lot of research on, on Boulder Hill, getting ready to do this video, is the fact that um, Buddy Hawks and was the other guy that comes with the Boulder Hill? Um, uh, uh, but this Buddy Hawks is the guy you mean, Dusty Hayes? Dusty no, Hayes there's, two, is... there's two, two figures, oh, Alex, Sector. Alex Sector. I apologize, Alex Sector. Yeah, yes. so Alex Sector really should have come with the Rhino instead of Matt Tracker, totally. Um, and yeah, and Buddy Hawks, he's co pilot of the Firecracker, so it's like you, you had to get this entire toy line to get all the figures you, you needed. To, to co-pilot all the correct vehicles and stuff. Absolutely. Got a super chat from Sal here. Um, thank you very much, Sal. He says, what is more? What is a more annoying trope? That's Kids that. in cartoons or the Disney princess being sure you horned in, um, i.e. Omega in Bad Batch? Um, well, I haven't watched Bad Batch. I don't plan on watching it. Um, I have disdain for both concepts. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, the kid in the movie, I mean, it never made a movie more attractive to me. I think uh, Michael might have said this already as well. Um, short Round never bothered me. 
No. Because one, he, you know, he seemed like he could actually handle himself. It was yeah, he was pretty much believable. <clears throat> yeah, he was capable. They they set that up very early on in the film by the fact that he can drive a car. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, totally. Wolfie. Uh, Wolfie762, thank you very much for the super chat. He said, um, we could get two birds stoned at once and drown, drown the lake kid from Dino Riders in that same pool of water. I never watched Dino Riders, so. Nor I. Um, there, was, there, there was a lot of people jumping out before screaming Alex Sector. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've got those two. Actually, I think I've got... I've got... Two Buddy Hawks and two Alex Sector figures because Chris Mee sent me the figures, then Jody sent me the play set. Um, and what was good is the, the figures that Chris Mee had sent me were in better condition, so I've swapped them out. Yeah, perfect. Um, but yeah, was it was that frustrating when you were a child that, um, take like so, um, uh, Buddy Hawks is the co pilot of the Firecracker, right? And then as a kid, you could, or, or were the figures available on those smaller card backs? Didn't you used to be able to get card backs with two figures? They were. You know, honestly, I never saw them on the card backs. The only figure I saw on card back was Scott with T-Bob. But um, I think Matt Tracker, yeah, here we go. I think he even said that, yeah. Figure two packs made for more reasonable for kids, families to get, you know, figures back then. Okay, so cool. They must have sold them that way. I never saw them in the stores I was in. Now, I, only, I really only collected it two years. After yep. '86, I was I was out. I was on to Centurions, and then that was the last line I collected. So yeah, but yeah, to, to you very much when you were a child was Star Wars, Mask, and Centurions. Yes, I I dabbled I dabbled in Transformers. I had some, um, but then I got I just once I saw these because this did this gave me my Transformers fix that you know it was vehicles that turned into something else. But you had you had characters that could interact, you know, figures that could interact with the with the vehicles. There was a cartoon that was far. Super, I hated the Transformers cartoon. I mean, if it wasn't <laughs> so the, the voice acting is. All, I mean, the plots are shit. Sorry, crap. The uh, the the animation is you know just okay. Yeah, I. It's the voice acting that really makes that show worthwhile at all. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I was yeah, I was hooked on the cartoon of masks, so I just moved right on to this. And trans I was careful with my toys, and I've said this time and again, Transformers broke. Even if you were, you know, gentle with them, they would eventually break. And I that pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the, the these aren't exactly the most robust toy. Like yeah. you wouldn't give these to a four year old. Uh yeah. if you give these to a four year old, certainly something like the Rhino, you're gonna lose the uh the side mirrors and all of that kind of thing. But if you give this to a uh six, seven year old kid who is careful with his toys, yeah. um I think uh I might I might I might have done a Patreon exclusive unboxing of the Rhino video. Do you I don't know? You did. You did. I did. Um and I was talking in there about how, how fragile it was. But actually, having it around for a while and playing with it a few times, it's not as fragile as, as you first think. You know, as long as you're careful with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are, these are some, some really good toys with some fascinating engineering. Um, I will be completely stripping apart the Rhino at some point, and I'll probably make a video of it so that I can chrome all of re-chrome all of the parts individually. I don't want to do it while they're still on the, the body of the vehicle and... I, I know what I'm like. I'll end up, you know, my, my entire Rhino will end up chrome. There won't be any purple left. <laughs> that's no, that's a great idea. You, you, they'll probably wind up drying better for you that way too, because you can, you know, put them on something with like a clip holding it steady, you know, after yeah. after you've chromed it. But yeah, that that model, yeah, yeah. those mo I use them to touch up, you know, a few spots here and there that were worn on some of the chrome parts. They work great. They really do. They're fantastic. Yeah, nice. For the price, I mean, you know. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, a, a younger kid or a kid that isn't careful certainly could have broken them. But when you consider, you know, how much moving stuff there is, and it's really mostly plastic, they're fairly robust. Again, comparing it to what a Transformer does, 10 times out of 10, this is going to last. The Transformer, you know. it's Yeah. Not... Anyway. Uh, my, I, I had Megatron when I was a child, and I think it broke on Christmas Day. Yeah. Um, Could you uh, ever get those legs to, you know, 
hold just right? I couldn't. I didn't really bother. Like once, once, once it broke, I think my dad glued the part back together. I put it into pistol mode, and then I just pretended it was James Bond's gun. I did have the attachments and turn it into a sniper rifle and stuff. So I did the same thing. I used it. I used it to play army. I, you know, I I didn't use it as a transformer. I used it as a gun because it was a nice gun. You know, once it was you know in gun form, it was. Oh, and, and, and for me, as a, as a child who did used to like uh, role play kind of uh, war theme stuff, exactly. you know, I had a lot of of plastic toy guns. Um, it was fascinating because you had all of the attachments, and you could, you know, put the silencer on, put the stock on, all that stuff. Um, yeah, there's a comment here from Tim Ward I wanted to bring up. He says, "Yes, um, over time we're finding that Kenner plastic was superior to Hasbro plastic." Absolutely. Um, it, it really was like GI Joe now is, um, um, has become quite, quite fragile. You know, if, if you're looking to strip a, v- a GI Joe, I mean, also due to the way they had designed GI Joe vehicles with not many of them had screws, you know, that it was all clipped together a bit more like a model kit, trying to bend those clips in now to take something apart. You're often likely to, to snap the clips off. So, that's a fact, yeah. And obviously, you know the the, the crotches break off the figures, and um, I'll tell you one can of plastic that was not superior. That was all the accessories on Ghostbusters figures. <laughs> yeah, that. How about that? And they, you pointed it out in your video. Um, they they really solved the problem with the neutrino ones, you know, with the or rather, the, oh, well, on, on the re-releases are yes. in, incredible. All the plastic's got a, it's got a lot of. Um, I don't know what's the right word, a bit like elasticity to it. You you, you can bend it and it'll it'll go back to its original shape. So totally, no, without a doubt, much more malleable. So I wanted to talk for a moment about the firecracker. Oh yeah. So the firecracker that is um, Hondo's vehicle. Yep, Honda McLean. Yep, and it gets destroyed in one of the episodes. Yes, it does. It does indeed. And then he comes back with the hurricane. Right. Which also was Night Stalker a couple times. Like it was different names, which is a strange thing. And they never explained that. But yeah. Yeah. But you saw fire. You saw Hurricane in the opening of every single mass cartoon. So, but yeah, very peculiar. So one of the things that, that, that gets me is that, what you the toy you've got there is called the firecracker, and yet the one with all the flames over it's called the hurricane. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't. I I keep calling this the firecracker. I'm like, I'm gonna do that in a video one day, and then the YouTube comments will explode and tell me how much of an idiot I am because I've called that the firecracker. We yeah, we all. I miss call thing. You know, I remember growing up. My my parents would call me my brother's name and my brother my name and. I thought it was ridiculous, and now I'm basically their age now that they were when they were calling me my brother's name, and I totally get it. So, you know, you miss call, <laughs> but you know, like you said, now you have everybody watching, and you miss call one thing one one time wrong, and they're all over you like white on rice, and it's it's game over. That's Mate, not the I, I, That's a hurricane. Sorry, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about, right? When 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 I was a young child, my my nan on my dad's side. She would always call me my brother's name and call my brother my name. Then, probably starting about ten or fifteen years ago, my mum started to do it. She would start. She would call me Flynn, which is my nephew's name. It's her eldest grandson. And just recently, I start mixing up the three cats' names, and Grace is always pointing it out. She's like, "No, it's not that." And it's it's not always the same two. I'm mixing up all three of them, and I'm like, mm-hmm. "God, I'm I'm getting to that age now." I could always tell how how pissed my parents were though, because if they called me my sister's name, then I knew they were really mad. Because when they got the gender mixed up, they I just knew they just saw red. <laughs> I completely <laughs> lost it at that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Better start um, Sorry, Brendan Haley. Good to see you here. Yes. He, he he joined a little late, but it's uh, it's great to see you here. He is um very new to uh to a mask collection. He's, been He's loving it though. Yep, I was chatting with him earlier this morning or. Late last night for him. Yep. Uh, Tree Theodore, thank you very much for the very kind super chat. 
Sure. Uh, it says Duke, Michael, Scuba Pete, Timothy, and Tony. Great content and moderating. Always a pleasure to catch your live streams. Thank you very much, Tree. I really appreciate that. Very kind. Um, and <laughs> yes, as I was going to pull that up. If you mix up Gracie's names with one of the cats, you know you're really in trouble. Um, yeah, it'd be funny if I called her George. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Lady oh, Gracie dear. instead of Lady Lady Harriet. Get that. Lady answer. Harriet. Yeah, well, she, she just gets called Harry anyway. So I, I mix up Harry and George often. And then I sent Grace a picture the other day. She was at work and I'm I'm trying to work at the iMac on a video script and Harry's climbing all over me. So I took a selfie, sent it to Grace and went, look, see, Curly won't leave me alone. I write in the message. I went, That's not Curly. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Um George Aitken says, am I thinking of him again? I'm, I'm always thinking of you, George. <laughs> oh, dear. So I can't remember what video of mine it was um, some time ago where I had talked about it. It might have been on a, on a live stream or maybe in like a, a playset video or, or something like that. Um, but I was talking about the scale used for, for mask and why I believe they use this scale. Now, it is, I am making some assumptions. Um, I, I, I feel I have a somewhat of an understanding. I, I haven't worked in toy production, but I've worked in manufacturing factories in, in my time. And um, me and Tim Ward got into a lot of back and forth with a guy in the comments um, trying to explain to him that, it was too cost prohibitive for them to make these vehicles larger. And he was like, no, 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 they don't. They just, you know, once they're uh, injecting, you know, injection molding the plastic, just a little bit of extra plastic, it would only make the vehicle cost X amount more due to the additional plastic. And I was like, no, 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 it extrapolates because it's the tooling that is expensive. And there are so you need, what you need to look at in toy production is the amount of different parts that come together, not the size of the parts, the number of parts. The more parts, the more complicated the toy, the more tools they need. They need to make hard metal injection molding tools. Mm -hmm. That's what makes mass toys so expensive. And to make those larger, you've got to make the tools larger. And they were spending so much money well, they would have had to have spent a lot of time on research and development for this line. Like, I, I really don't believe that this was a toy line that was conceptualized and introduced in one year like most toy lines were. I truly believe, and I don't know this for certain, that Mask was most likely a two-year um, research and development period to bring this to market because... Um, I, yeah. you know, I just don't don't think they could have done this in, in a 12-month period, not the way they did things back then when they were still using fax machines, uh, factories in the Orient and stuff like that. So I, th I just think they're too complex to get the mechanisms, you know, from designing the toy to figuring out, okay, how are we going to make this work? And then that all had to play into designing and deciding what scale they use. I mean, imagine how big this would have been if it would have been full three and three quarter, it would have been enormous. And it was already expensive. I mean, these yeah. were not cheap toys. No, no. No, and, and, you, and you also need to look at the way that, that toy lines were sold back in the day. You had you had your standard action figures, but like Star Wars figures were, were very cheap on the market at the time. The kind of thing that a kid could buy with pocket money. Um, a mask toy, like a mask figure on its own, is not that enticing to a kid. So you've got to have the smaller scale items like the Condor and the Piranha mm -hmm. that were, you know, that's why everyone, you know, the Condor, I think for most kids, it was their first toy because it was the cheapest toy in the line. Exactly. They weren't going out and buying a two pack of figures for Mask. What was the point of that? Right. They were going out and buying Condor because that was the fun part of the play feature. So the toys were um, all about the vehicles, not the figures. I mean, half the time, playing with them, I, I wouldn't even take some of the figures out of their vehicle because it was about, you know, rolling out. And there wasn't like a place you could, as cool as Boulder Hill was, and it is cool because, I mean, it 
it's interactive. There's a lot of gimmicks. You can control it remotely, almost like a puppet. And yep. but you you couldn't go into it and you know have them sit down in some sort of round table where they charge their masks. It wasn't. You weren't really doing much that you saw on the show, so it was all about the vehicles rolling out. Yeah. I mean, you, you couldn't even get Rhino through the door, so there was that too. Oh, now I've got to rewrite my script again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that, that's already in the script. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, I think Firecracker fits through. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of the vehicles did not, so, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> enough. I mean, c c case in point, this so the, the Piranha and the Gator only turned up two days ago, I think, turned up in the mail from, wow. from Reclaimers. Um, and I've played around with the submarine. I've played around with the Gator. When I took these out of the box, um, the figures already had their masks on. I don't even think I've taken them off to yeah. see what the, the faces look like. I mean, it I think that might have been why I didn't lose many of them because I didn't uh, – any of them because I never – I always put them away back in the vehicle with their mask on. And, you know, some of them, as you know, have seatbelts. I mean, Thunderhawk has seatbelts. Yeah. Uh, Man um, Manta has a seatbelt. Matt Tracker here says, the yeah. rhino not fitting through the boulder heel door drives me nuts. I, 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 I can see that it would, but it, just imagine how big Boulder Hill would be if God. the rhino did fit through there. Yeah, um, that, yeah that's uh, it's, it's going to be an epic play set. I mean, it already is. The, the, it covers so much floor space. Like, I, I, I actually don't know. Once I finish the video and I film all of, of the beat, but it, when I put the Boulder Hill on this play set, it's it's wider that way, and obviously when I film it, I've got to turn it around. It's going to be hanging over the the front of the table. Yeah. When I'm finished the video, like I I don't know where it's going to go. I, I don't know where it's going to. It doesn't fit into any of the cabinets. It doesn't fit onto a shelf. No. Nope. It's almost like I need to put a. I need to buy a USSS flag and put Boulder Hill on the flag. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, in the middle of the toy room, you there is room. You could put like a, you know, a long table down the middle where the flag could sit on, on that base that you would yeah. build. And then, you know, Boulder Hill at the other end. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, I, I do. I definitely do want to display it. But yeah. Jody, thank you very much for the super chat and fun fact number three. We almost got V vehicles. One was based on Firecracker's mold. Um one based on Gator's mold. I have seen some. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen those. There is a there is an image around online for um so, for some prototype vehicles from the V line. Although I'm sure they were going to be made by LJN, which surprises me that they're using the Firecracker and Gator mold because Kenner and LJN different different toy line. Unless it was being made in a foreign country. Um, as an example, look. Like, you would get things like that would creep into the action man line because Palatoy being in the UK, they had a, a, a relationship with both Hasbro and Kenner. Um, right. So the, um, the gloves on the action man space Rangers are actually taken from um, the bar, the $6 million man mission to Mars outfit. So they could, they could just borrow tooling from, from either company. But if, if you're talking about producing toys in the States, like, Kenner would not loan stuff to LJN and they wouldn't loan stuff to Hasbro and they wouldn't loan stuff to Mattel. It didn't, you know, they're, they're competing with each other. It's only yeah. when you get a foreign company like Palatoy where you can get that crossover. So that's cool. Um, Joseph says, in my opinion, the mask cartoon was among the best when matching the animation to the actual toy prototypes. The toys looked and performed exactly as the cartoon, unlike Transformers. Yes. Um, that's, um, that, that's a that's a very very valid point. Um, Matt says I'm not sure what Matt's talking about. I'm jealous of Michael's setup. Boulder Hill was actually behind glass. Mine is not behind glass. Unfortunately, these cabinets aren't deep enough. Like oh, Michael said. French maybe, but his isn't even. Believe it or not, it's it's supposed to be <laughs> exactly. He got it's supposed those, to be. Yeah, those cabinets were custom built. Something happened. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, they never got 
to get doors put on them. It had been planned to be, but yeah, you're right about that. Sorry, yeah. I misinterpreted you. Um, Was masking earmarked in the UK as Action Man replacement? Darren Hayward. Um, no, no. Um, different toy line. Uh, sorry, di different company. Um, it was just, but by, by that time in the eighties, anything popular in the states was 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 coming to the UK. Um, even more so in the latter half of the eighties, because once kind of, well, Palatoys, you know, they shut up the design department in late eighty four. Then the company pretty much went away in eighty five. For the rest of the decade, we were just getting American toy companies, um, American toys imported under under not always under under license. Hasbro just started, you know. I think prior to Palatoy's demise, anything Hasbro that came to the UK was sold with a Palatoy logo. Mm. After '85, it just started having a Hasbro logo on it, and and that and that was that. So, yeah. um, but go, going back to Joseph's comment about the way they actually functioned, like they did in the in the cartoon, the toys, um, Centurions was pretty good at that as well. Absolutely. And, uh, the, you know, the cartoon stayed, it was accurate. Like if they fired a missile, the animation was, was in sync with that. You know, there was continuity that you didn't see that missile on, the, for the most part anyway, you didn't see that missile back on that guy. Um, yeah. You know, I know that was continuity didn't, I mean, physics didn't even exist in the Transformers with that whole mass shifting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, uh, Centurions, you're right. The, the cartoon, I don't know if that's because Kirby was involved. Because uh, Jack Kirby, I don't know how how deeply he was involved, but he was definitely involved in the, the concept of that whole franchise, the Centurions. You know, the, the characters, I don't know about backstories, but weapon systems and all of that. So yeah. maybe he, he might have had something to do with that because he was a stickler for detail and rightly so. Matt Track has got some uh, some fun facts here. So Condor was almost called Whirly Bike. Oof, that's a bad name. Glad they stuck with Condor. And Thunderhawk was almost called the Chameleon. Mm. That I don't think that would have made sense. I think Thunderhawk's a much much better option there. Um, Thunder. I mean, that reminds me of Top Gear, Eagle Thrust, Thunder, something. <laughs> Would you two sing the mask theme song? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, I'm not singing the mask theme song. There's a great cover band that does it uh, on YouTube. Really, really good. Yeah, okay. Um, Jody, thank you very much for the super chat. It says, on behalf of Matt Tracker, I tried to donate with some fun facts. It's not letting me. Condor's almost cool. Thank you very much, Jody. Um, he's, he's reposting Matt Tracker's as well. And... Okay. A world made of cardboard. Appreciate the super chat, but I'm not singing. I'm not singing to anybody. <laughs> we can George, talk about George, the theme song, though. George, George, thank you, George. Thank you. George. Yes, yes. Good <laughs> um, We certainly can talk about the theme song, though, because it is one of the you know, and there there were some very good um, theme songs to animated series in the. In the 1980s, but it's up there with one of the best. Um, Absolutely. Very, very catchy. <clears throat> I don't find it gets too repetitive. Um, you know, when, when, when the theme song starts coming up again uh, during the episodes, it doesn't really get repetitive or anything. So well, they kind of synthesize it up or they, they would change it up. Uh oh, retro blastings in the house. What do they have to say? Says, have either of you had a lifelong disinterest in the little mask figure packs like I have? Yeah, so <laughs> briefly, <laughs> Michael Schaefer was saying earlier that he, he never even saw them when he was a kid. Never saw um, them. I I was never aware of like I was I was well aware of seeing these toys in toy stores, seeing the boxes. Um, I think I, the only kids who would be buying those figure packs would be one who had maybe three or four vehicles and wanted to have, you know, co-pilots. But beyond that, like I said, you, for most people, their very, very first mask toy, 
you know, if they're on a budget and they're using pocket money, it's the Condor. They're not going to go and buy a figure two pack because right. it was all about the vehicles. I mean, you made a good point. If if I wouldn't have gotten Boulder Hill, I would have wanted Alex Sector to put in my Rhino. Um, yeah. And, and Buddy Hawks to put in, you know, fire uh, Firecracker. Uh, I would have wanted... Yeah, I might have wanted. Uh, I mean, like I said, I only you know the only the only really figure pack I got was Scott and T Bob. But if if they were on the shelf, my kid eyes never saw them. I only saw the vehicles, and because uh, don't the figure packs packaging even looks very different than the boxes? Because the box art's gorgeous, but I yeah. think the figure packs don't quite have that same pop. I might have a false memory there though. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's Miles Mayhem in khaki pants. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie. Yeah. Oops. We did it again. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie James DOA, thank you very much for, for, for the super chat. Um, also, thanks for reaching out to me on Patreon so I know who you are. It's a di different name. I obviously won't say it here. Um, lost and Wallace. Mask often got lost on the toy shelves back in the day because there was just so many toy lines to choose from in the 80s and shelf space was always limited. I remember seeing mostly the vehicles. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I also maybe – I know back in the day um, toy, toy stores or department stores, um, they would go to – well, this is how it worked in the UK anyway. They would go to Toy Fair each year. And they would look around and they would place their orders. So they would look at the new products coming out and they would place orders and they would want things at various different price points. But, you know, maybe, maybe they had watched the cartoon. Maybe they were smart and they were looking and like, no, we don't want those figure two packs because that's not going to be what children want to buy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I have seen a lot more of those figure two packs around later in life when I've gone to collector shows and you'll yes. people will be trying to sell them. AFA graded, like like, like Retro Blasting says. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Miles Mayhem in a khaki uniform. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and the, the guy was obsessed with with uh, military uniforms, though. Like, I yeah. think Michael might have even said this in his mask video, but it was dead on. He's, it was like Joe Don Baker in uh, was it Living Daylights, where he's Living always in his, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, the dude's always in military uniforms. He didn't serve a day. What are you doing playing dress up? I, yeah, just. <laughs> he also reminds me of um, General Warhawk from the Rambo line. Very, yeah. very similar uniform. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Retro is 155 watching, 161 now, uh, 116 likes. That's a great ratio for a live stream. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, it Thanks, is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's what's happened. So, so I, I used to, um, well, for quite some time now, I've been unlisting my live streams post stream for the audience. To, I know there was someone, uh, Daniel Dorian, I think, was asking earlier mm -hmm. how to find the Retro Blasting live streams. So you go to their channel page. Um, look up the playlist tab and then look for the specific playlist and have all the live streams in there. Um, quite some time, around the same time Retro Blasting was doing it because we've got, kind of got some advice from them. Um, an expert was telling us that there are a lot of people on YouTube who only watch live streams and there are a lot of people who only watch pre-produced content. And if they keep getting um, notifications and live streams in their, in their feed, it can actually turn them off your channel and they'll unsubscribe mm -hmm. so what you should do is post live stream unless your live stream well, the last live stream was very very popular uh, the one on this channel where i talked about motu origins yes it was um it was very very popular uh, it, un unusually popular um i think the only live stream prior to that that's been as popular was when i had retro blasting on the live stream to talk about robots you know a popular topic and a uh, and an incredibly popular guest. Um, thank you again for that, Michael. Um, so I, I did a bit of a test this week and decided to not unlist that last live stream because it was popular. And it's getting up to close to 8,000 views for a live stream is incredible. That's um, great. And people are still commenting on it as well. So very interesting. That's great. Love that. Yeah. Um, Matt Trank is asking Retro Blasting here, what if Miles Mayhem was in jean shorts instead? <laughs> uh, 
I don't think anyone needs that. I um the the only action figure I can think of that came in jean shorts was Daisy from the Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. And you don't need an action figure in jean shorts. <laughs> well, maybe that doesn't uh I'm sure there's a figure of Kevin Smith and he wears those jorts all the time, so maybe I'm sure there's a figure of him. But again, oh yeah, that's not as bad as as jean. When I think of jean shorts, I think of like really the cutoffs. Yeah, short, yeah. short cutoff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know some of us might have worn it back in the eighties, but oh yeah, back when you wore the Magnum PI sh length shorts. Yeah, it was a totally different time. The yeah. socks were longer. The shorts were shorter. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, we've um we've been going for about. An hour, and I've got a couple of unboxings to do here, so yeah. I'll just start moving a few of these beautiful toys out of the way. And, a, and, a, and a, once again, a huge shout out to Dean from All Things Eighties for uh, donating this beautiful Manta. Um, absolutely stunning, gorgeous. Yeah, that that's the only toy I actually acquired to add in that I really wanted from the later lines because the rest of them just don't do anything for me. But I mean, you have to have Vanessa and Manta. That's that's an awesome car. It is. It is. I think I told even, you. Even, even this little piranhas are really cool little toys. They're they're all great. I mean, I mean that the, the play feature is packed into that because you can extend the weapons and the fins without launching it, or yeah. launch it and then they they extend. Plus, the base that has it still has like a weapon on it. So once it's even yeah. launched out of that, there's you know, they really packed a lot you know into these. I mean, the front, the front. Uh, Wheels, you know, making that gunfire. I thought all that stuff was just the coolest thing as a kid. The the only thing that, that these toys are lacking is steerable front wheels. Yes. I, I completely understand why. Right. But um, was there – I'll ask you in the audience, was there any mask toy ever made that had steerable front wheels? Because I'd be interested to know. can't imagine. I don't know if anybody else in, out there uh, thought this, but did anybody think Outlaw, the Venom big black semi, did anybody ever think that that looked a little bit like Goliath from Knight Rider? Because I did as a kid. That was always a stand-in for my Knight Rider car to fight Goliath. So just was curious if anybody ever... No, I'll one. tell you what, what I thought it was. There's, I'm going to have to quickly Google this. Um, there was a from Mad Max crappy TV show that was on in, in Australia when I first moved here. Um, there was a crappy old TV show with Sam Jones, you know, the actor from Flash Gordon, and yep. he was in this. He was in this 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 big black rig. I can't remember the name of the damn TV show. Oh, wow. Someone in the chat's going to know. It's a very obscure... Well, I think it's a very obscure TV show. I don't hear many people talk about it, but... Um, Jody, thank you for the super chat. Says, um, always wondered how they would get Gator and Piranha back together in real life. Um, those are the point. things that, <clears throat> you know, can keep you up at night, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> no need to worry about that stuff. I think Tim Ward has something here for you. Highwayman. That's that's the name of the TV show, The Highwayman. Highwayman. Sorry. Yep. <clears throat> Tim, thank you very much, Tim Ward. You you are you are doing your duty today. He says he'll wear Daisy Duke shorts if someone super chats a thousand dollars to analog toys. But would you wear them for all three days at a Joe Fest convention. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because I'll just say now, I've got, so I'm, I'm going to, we're going to have a, a break for 15 minutes after this so I can have a cup of tea and then we'll have a Patreon only live stream. Um, if you're not already a member of Patreon, there's a number of different tiers, but for the, the basic $1 a month tier, you can join, get access to, um, um, to our Patreon only live streams. And today I'm going to be discussing, um, the Valiverse panel from Joe Fest. Um, obviously, I wasn't able to attend Joe Fest, but um, 
I'm I'm really excited. I want to want to talk about the uh, the valve. I actually ended up watching that panel two or three times uh, yesterday. So. Uh, Robert Chambers Jr., thank you very much for the super chat. He says, thank you, Tony, for another wonderful live stream. Reminded me of when I was a kid. Uh, you do a wonderful job. Keep it up. Um, thank you. And 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 thank you to my mask enthusiast special guest today who's ah. normally working behind the scenes but um, is on camera. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I always enjoy chatting with you, Michael. Well, it's good. I, I'm it's, always it's, honored for you to have me on. I appreciate it. I, I have a blast. Isn't it wonderful that... In this day and age, like people like you and me who've never met live on completely opposite sides of the planet can become good friends. It's it's, um, it's amazing. Cool. I love it. Uh, it is one of the many good things about the technology and the advancement. I mean, that we I get to connect to guys. I was telling you, I was jokingly crying the blues. I was at a toy show last Sunday, and I said, I'm. I'm buying for toys. I'm buying toys for guys from all around the world. I got guys <laughs> in the Netherlands. I got guys on the West Coast. I got guys mid, you know, middle of the country buying stuff for you. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic that we've, you know, all connected like this. Really, really. So cool. it's it, it's my it's my <clears throat> my birthday in the middle of next week, and like right in the middle. So Grace was like, do you want to go out the weekend before? So I'm working next weekend and I'll, mm. and I'll be getting busy, uh, ready for Iconicon as well. So I was like, no, we'll go out the weekend before. So we went out, we had a lovely meal with some friends and nice. Gracie wanted to go out uh, after the meal and a bit of dancing, a few more drinks. I was like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go out. So I got a message from, um, from Laser Pants, from the Infinity Equation, while I'm out drinking. And I'm like, I'm not going to respond to this because – I'll try and type, and it won't make any sense. Um, but he was at at uh, at Joe Fest offering if he could, um, um, if there was anything I was looking for, you know, he'd, he'd happily pick something up for me. So anyway, I didn't end up responding until the following morning. So I'll like, oh, go. Sorry, I was out last night, and I never said it to him, but I was jokingly going to go. Yeah, if anyone's got a flag, pick pick me up at USS flag. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's 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 great that the you know these these people. Um, you know, you've never met in person, and here they are. So, uh, Robert, oh, you didn't have to do that, but thank you very much, Robert Chambers. And here's five dollars for your birthday. It's not much, but enjoy it. Thank you very much. Um, I've been, I've been very lucky. Gracie has, um, she gave me my presents early. She bought me a, a 4K blue. I don't have a 4K TV, but I do plan on buying one one day. But um, um, she bought me a Blu-ray player, which is why I've. Oh, wow. Keith Holmesley. What have we got here? We've got limited editions of Mini Cobra Commander. Six, collect them all. It looks like he's put them all in here. Destro. Very nice. We've got the Hot Wheels, Masters of the Universe, the Battle Ram. I haven't seen Keith Holmesy in the chat. I don't know if he's here today. He might be busy. We have the Duke Limited Edition mini figurine. I think he sent me the whole set here, you know. We have Roadblock. The Red Ninja. And, of course, Snake Eyes. Yeah, the complete set of limited edition set of six. Thank you very much, Keith. Appreciate that. And we've also got here the Thunder Tank. The Hot Wheels Thunder Tank. Wow. Very nice. I see Liar Convoy has actually done a done a review of this on, on YouTube. Done a review. I don't know if I could ever do a review of something quite so small, but uh, it's a very interesting review. We've got here um, the blue jetpack for um, Stratos. Nice. Keith Holmesley says he found those at Dollar Tree. Oh, nice. Thank you, Keith. Oh, you are in the chat, Keith. Thank you. Oh, my word. It is what I think is like the world's smallest 
Optimus Prime. Holy crap. That is tiny. It is. <laughs> I think Keith has also sent me the world's smallest G.I. Joe before as well, so <laughs> they go together. Oh, this is beautiful. So from Jada Toys. Wow. The 89 Batmobile. That's that's still my favorite. Anton first at his best. Is it 89 or is this Batman Returns? Well, it's basically the same. They're, ve they're very similar. I think this is a Batman Returns. Yes. And... Man, he packed a lot in that little box. He did. And we've got... Car from Knight Rider. Oh, we were just, I just brought up Knight Rider. Yeah. So thank you very much, Kate. Knight Automating Roving Robot. Um, it was voiced by two voice actors. One, obviously, everybody knows was Peter Cullen, but I actually preferred the other guy that voiced him more personally. That's just my taste, yeah. but I, I thought it was more menacing. It was less robotic, and there was something more evil about the guy's voice. But that, that's just my opinion. Anyway, sorry. To digress on the night fighter, this is a mask. This is mask. You know, I know kit stood for something, but mask stands for something entirely different. Yeah. Yeah. Command with a K. <laughs> yes. Um, and Jody has done it again. Holy crap. Look at that box. What did you Jody. do, Jody? What did you do? So we've got this is going to be another box that I can barely fit onto the table. Okay, we've got a we've got a note here. I opened it at the right end. Jody, I'm not going to read this out. Yeah, I'll read it out afterwards. I'm still not 100% sure what it is, but. And we've got in here a Gen X Toys Geek fridge magnet. Thank you very much, Jody. Well, we've got Skips chips, so I'll be eating some of them on the after show. <laughs> nice. Very nice, Jody. Jeez. Oh, wow. Wow. It is the A-Team Combat Headquarters set. Holy crap. And uh, yes, I did have this as a child, Jody. That's awesome, Jody. And the letter says, Hey, Tony, during your A-Team live stream, you mentioned you had this set as a child. I found one on eBay. It should be near complete, but is missing the cardboard tent part. Um, that should be pretty easy to replace, Jody. Um, hope you'll enjoy this addition to your A-Team. I love it, Jody. Thank you very, very much. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this play set, that's better. So there was a colorful piece of card that you basically laid on the ground, and then it was almost like a combat training set. And you can see you've got all the A-team figures in there. There's a dinghy. Wow. There's some... Bunkers, um, mach machine guns on tripods, parachute packs, all sorts of stuff. Wow. In fact, there you go. That's what the actual toy looks like. Nice. See, that's that's a, really that cool looks like a prototype because all the colors are a little bit different on there. Right. A lot of playability, though. I mean, in that small flat pack, 
you know, and not small, but it, you know, it's not very deep. But man, that is nice. Yeah. Uh, figurehead, thank you very much for the kind super chat. It says, finally get to see a live live. Uh, <laughs> love the channel, mate. This should cover a round for yourself and Gracie. Have thank you very much. Um, I, I, I definitely will. I, I, I bought a few rounds for me and Gracie on the weekend. <laughs> so, okay. Jody, this is this is awesome. Um, Tim even Moore, when I, I I've lost that auction more than once. I guess he's been looking for one of these as well. Just happened to know. Yeah. That. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, th this is one of those toys I had when I was a child. That kind of even when I wasn't playing with a team anymore. This became like a, a combat training center for my action force figures. Um, it was all similar scaled stuff that you could very easily cross over. So nice. Much appreciated, Jody. My birthday came early. Beautiful. All right, guys. Well, um, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, I'm going to jump on to a Patreon-only live stream in about 15 or 20 minutes. I'll share the link on Patreon um, as soon as I'm, I'm finished here. I just need to go and make a cup of tea and have a bathroom break. So, um, Michael, by all means, you're, uh, you're all set up there. Stay on camera for the after show as well. Well, thanks. Um, and, we'll have, and, yeah, I'm going to be chatting about the, um, the Valiverse panel um, from, from Joe Fest over the weekend as well. So and if anyone was at Joe Fest... And you also happen to be on Patreon. Be sure to, um, although some of those guys, I think, we might be actually traveling back from Joe Fest at the moment. So, and real um, quick, make sure everybody checks out Iconicon online. the The schedule is now live on that. Yes. So make sure you check out the website. Check out all the different guests that are going to be appearing. What time? That way, you can make schedules. You know, for if there's any live streams you want to see, you know, at the exact time, they'll tell you when everything's going on. Yeah, there's there's more than there's almost forty different um, forty different events to to attend in a five day period. Be that you know some are short, like my Ghostbusters video is fifteen minutes, but then there are tons and tons of different panels. I'll be interviewing um, Bob Breakin, who had his birthday just yesterday. So happy birthday, Bob Breakin, the designer of the Robo Skull. Mm -hmm. um, lots and lots of fun. I. Um, when when I'm when I'm not on streams, I'll be basically watching along to to all the others. I'm taking some time off work. It's going to be a uh, an epic five day period. So Tim Wads just put the uh, the link to the schedule in in the chat there. The schedule went live a few hours ago. To so go over, have a look. You'll see all the different content that we've got prepared. And um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Fun fun live stream. Thanks, Michael, for for participating. Thanks. And, for uh, yeah, we Thanks. will. Um, We'll see the patrons on the Patreon only live stream in about 15 or 20 minutes. You can join for only a buck, guys. So anytime you want, just one dollar a month. That's all it is. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate right. it for having me on. You're welcome. Cheers, guys. See ya. <laughs>